Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. After a crazy turn of events, we have FIFA 23 official player ratings. Yes, we have official ratings way earlier than they were supposed to be released because of a crazy leak that allowed people to get on FIFA 23, the full game, on Xbox already at the end of August, weeks before this was supposed to happen. People are on the full game of FIFA 23. So we're going to talk about that mistake that EA and Microsoft made, but also talk about these ratings because now we know some of the ratings for guys like Vinicius Jr., for Cristiano Ronaldo, for Lionel Messi, some of the big name players, big upgrades, also some crazy downgrades. And we'll talk through why EA might be rating some of these players like they are. So if you're excited to see some of the leaks for today, hit the thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you're new. Let's start by talking about the whole situation because on Xbox is where this all started and it kind of started early in the day yesterday on the 30th. People were saying that EA have accidentally made FIFA 23 playable for some players as it was downloadable in the store. Now, of course, the release date for FIFA 23, the standard edition, is September 30th. Evidently, Microsoft had some sort of misunderstanding with EA Sports, and it seems like they somehow let the game go live early. As you can see, people are downloading the game. People are, are starting to play the game and, and get it downloaded. People are even sending screenshots of, of packs that they're opening with 84 rated Hakimi, this guy packed, right? So there's your first rating leak for the day, 84 rated PSG Hakimi. But the craziest thing is this, is this was not supposed to happen, of course, right? We probably weren't going to be learning about player rating leaks for like another two weeks or so. The second week of September is usually when we start to get some of these leaks and a former producer and a former dev at EA Sports, True Boy, was tweeting out how this is not, this is absolutely uh, not a mistake from EA's point of view. This is a mistake from Microsoft. He said the same thing happened to me in FIFA, FIFA 16 with Xbox pre-orders, and that was just a week before launch. And now a whole month of planning is gone for FIFA 23, saying that a lot of the EA guys were going to have to reach out to Microsoft and that Microsoft was really the people that, that messed up here, not EA Sports. Now, regardless of the situation there, we have ratings to look at because of these leaks and people being on the game. Now, what I want to take a look at first is some of the biggest downgrades. We're going to look at some of the biggest upgrades. Right here in front of you, you see a list of the top 40 players in FIFA Ultimate Team, FIFA 23, with the highest rated players to start off with. And what I want to look at is some of these pace downgrades and just some of the upgrades overall in general on both sides of the coin. But as you can see, gone are the days where we have Messi being 94, Ronaldo being 93, and those guys at the top, clear top of the FIFA Ultimate Team ratings tier list. Now we have five players rated 91 rated with nobody being the clear-cut winner of top-rated player in FIFA 23. Mbappe, Benzema, De Bruyne, Messi, and Lewandowski, all 91, and then a bunch of 90-rated cards below them. Now, the biggest thing you're going to notice here is like, oh my goodness, Nate, what happened to Ronaldo's and Messi's cards? They actually look kind of not that good. Like, that's what I want to talk about today with these downgrades is EA Sports continuing from the trend of last year, from FIFA 21 to FIFA 22, they dropped the pace on so many cards last year and they're continuing it this year last year currently this year in fifa 22 ronaldo had 87 pace and was 91 rated so he gets a minus one downgrade goes from 87 pace to 81 pace he goes like down minus one shooting minus three passing and his physical stays the same dribbling goes down three but minus six pace on Ronaldo's card. Almost the same thing for Messi as well, right? 81 pace for him. Ronaldo and Messi are the same pace in FIFA 23. It's crazy to see the Messi downgrade as well from a 93 rated overall down to a 91. He goes down four pace, but then his shooting, passing, and dribbling also take a hit, dropping down under 90 for shooting, 90 passing, 94 dribbling still, and then 64 physical minus one for Messi there. So, of course, you look at the two goats, right? Messi and Ronaldo, big downgrades for them. Now, why is EA taking a lot of these guys' pace down on the attacking side of things. And as we look through a few more player ratings, you're going to notice a common trend. Neymar, look at this, 87 pace, like what? Down bad. Harry Kane, Kimmich, all got pace downgrades. Conte, minus six pace on his FIFA Ultimate Team card. 
Um, let's see, there's there was another option or another card in here that I saw that was down a lot on pace. I think, um, actually, no, that was it. I'm thinking of a, another card. But, like, these big-time pace downgrades and downgrades in general, why is EA doing this? Well, I think they're doing it for two different reasons. I think they want to make pace a little bit less OP and less relevant as it has been in previous years. And again, like I said, we saw the start of this last year where like the Ronaldo and Messi card last year, if we go look at Messi's card from FIFA 21 and earlier, 87 pace, right? 88 pace on the previous years of Messi. Now he's he's going down to what 81. Now I understand that Messi is getting older, and usually that means that players lose some pace in FIFA with their stats. It just makes sense. But if you look across the board, a player like Conte or a player like Kimmich, why are they losing a lot of pace off of their card when really they they should be staying around the same? I think the reason why EA is downgrading a lot of these pace stats is because they want to make the game a little bit more balanced. That's kind of the thing they're doing here. And as you'll see here in a second, as we look through more stats, they are upgrading the pace on defenders, right? Van Dyke got plus three pace. So reason number one, they want to make the game a little more balanced. Reason number two, I think, especially for these attackers, EA wants to make more room for future upgrades, right? If they give Ronaldo and Messi 81 pace, think about it. Couple informs, couple special cards. They can then progress the power curve of FIFA 23 a little bit slower than they did in FIFA 22, where by winter wild cards and by team of the year, we have cards that are, you know, Hullet Gang, all 80 plus stats. We have cards hitting like 99 pace, and we had really, really crazy stats by the midpoint of the year in FIFA 22. I think EA wants to, you know, fine tweak that a little bit in FIFA 23 and be careful with the power curve. So that's my two opinions on why EA are doing this. Now, as I mentioned with defenders like Van Dyke, perfect example here. Take a look at the Van Dyke card. Here's a little nice image put together by um, Sahil on Twitter. You know, this is the Van Dyke card with the confirmed stats, 81 pace. This year in FIFA 22, he had 78 pace and as you remember again as i talked about in fiba 21 these guys had even less pace in fiba 21 van dyke was 90 rated and he had 76 pace this year he's going to be 90 rated and have 81 pace what's the difference the difference is ea sports wants to make these center backs faster and make them a little bit better defending to combat all the pace that the attackers have. Now, also, they changed the um, the splits last year between acceleration and sprint speed. If you remember, last year we were upset that Van Dyke went up in pace. He went from 76 to 78, but he got 66 acceleration down from 72 from the previous year, and then they really juiced up his sprint speed. I think that this year Van Dyke's sprint speed and acceleration split is going to be annoying once again. But still, if you think about 70 acceleration and like 92 sprint speed for an 81 paced Van Dyke getting plus three over his card from last year, that's pretty crazy. So I think that kind of goes along with the narrative that, that EA is, is trying to make pace a little bit less OP and bring some more balance into the game. If you take a look at some of the other defenders that are in this top 40 list, um, let's see, there was another one in here that had a pretty sizable upgrade, Koulibaly. Koulibaly's card looks incredible. 82 pace, 88 defense, and 85 physical for his card. Antonio Rudiger looks really good as well. 82 pace on his card, um, 86 defending, and 85 physical. So, so many great ratings inside of here. So many surprises and also kind of like disappointments. I feel like the disappointments definitely start with Ronaldo, and with Messi, when we take a look at some of these cards in, in terms of rating and where they're at. Now, I want to take a look through some more ratings as well. We've just looked at the top 40. I want to look at some of the more popular cards. Rafinha, Barcelona, right wing, 91 pace, 79 shooting, 77 passing, 85 dribbling. Kind of reminds you of like an Usman Dembele type card. Now we're going to have not just Usman, we're going to have Rafinha as well as a very overpowered right-sided player in the La Liga. It also makes a bit of a difference that Rafinha is Brazilian. Think about the new FIFA 23 chemistry links, right? You could have um, Vinicius Jr., who we're going to look at in a second, Eder Militao, and Rafinha in the team and have three Brazilians all from La Liga. That would be huge for the way the new chemistry system works. And also, we're going to have to think about like the positions, the secondary positions that all these cards have. If Rafinha can be moved to like, you know, center attacking mid or striker, like that's going to be huge for squad building as well. We're, we didn't really learn a ton of those, uh, apart from a couple of leaks that we had from in the game where people were actually 
clicking in on the card and looking at their secondary positions. We didn't have a ton of leaks of that, just more so of the stats, but I'm sure there's going to be more to come. So definitely watch for on Twitter and we'll talk about things as these leaks arise. Take a look at this card. This is going to be a card that so many people get excited for. 86 rated Vinny Jr. A huge, huge upgrade. One of the biggest upgrades from FIBA 22 to FIBA 23. I mean, this card looks almost identical to what his like secondary inform that we had in FIFA 22 that we didn't get until like maybe November or something like that is when we got that second inform Vinicius Jr. I mean, and this card looks really, really good. So like plus nine shooting from his gold card last year, really big upgrade. Now let's throw some prices out there. You know, some of you guys are like, Nate, you're a market guy, right? Let's throw some prices out there. Vinny Jr. last year at the start of the game was how much? He was 30,000 coins. And remember, this card was out of packs because his 83 rated inform was in packs, which as you can see is, you know, not even as good except for the pace being plus one higher than his card that he's going to start off with this year in FIFA 23. This inform Vinny started at 145K and went all the way to 366,000 coins. If I had to give a guesstimate and a guess and maybe a range of where I think this Vinny card will be on the market. I do think that gold cards, since they are even more nerfed than in previous years, will be cheaper this year than ever. And their people are going to quickly upgrade into new promo cards and stuff like that. Um, and that, I think that's kind of EA's plan as well is to make these cards lower rated so they can upgrade them more and get people to move away from gold cards faster. So I think gold cards are going to be really cheap this year. I think the market's going to be a lot like it was in FIFA 22 at the start of the game. There's plenty of time to talk about that as we get closer to the game start, but I really feel like this Vinicius Jr. is going to be a two to 250,000 coin card by the full game release basically the 1st of October. So maybe a little bit more than that in the first week when we start on the web app and we don't have a lot of supply, but I'm saying two, 250,000 coins is all that this card is gonna be in that beginning stage. We'll have to see, again, new chemistry system this year, you know, in some of these upgrades and, and pack weights gonna be changing. So a lot of unknowns with this market and, and with what we expect to see on the game, but still, I still expect prices to be very, very reasonable at the start of the year this year. Let's talk about Tamori or TikTok Tamori as he was known last year. Uh, really over overpowered starter card last year in uh, FIFA 22 as well, or, or this year, I guess you could say. But this one got a massive, massive upgrade. If we take a look at Mr. TikTok Tamori, his base card last year was 79 rated. Huge plus five boost for an AC Milan also with English links. Again, very, very good for chemistry links for the upcoming FIFA 23. Four-star weak foot as well. If they don't change that, that would be fantastic. 82 pace, 80 defense, and 79 physical. He gets a massive, massive upgrade, especially in that defensive category. I think a card like this is going to end up being 75,000 coins. You, you might be like, Nate, this card looks way better than 75k at the start of the game. Again, I think the problem here is a little bit of the links. I know you can link Teo Hernandez, Mike Magnan, Rafael Leao. AC Milan got shown the love with some big upgrades, but I think a card like this is not as hyped even as a Jules Koundé card. Even though this Koundé card looks maybe a little bit worse than Tomori, it still looks good enough to be very cracked. And I think with the French links, and again, with so many great Barcelona players and La Liga players that people will want to link in their teams, I think this Kunde card will be more expensive than Tamori. That's just my prediction. So uh, this Kunde card, again, talk about defenders getting upgraded. Take a look at this Kunde, right? Remember last year, everybody started getting really hyped about Kunde's base card last year as an 83 rated card. It was really good. Start of the game, he was like 20, 30,000 coins. And then now we get an even bigger upgrade. But look, he goes up plus one overall and gets plus three pace, man. EA is juicing all the pace on these defenders again. It's crazy. Now moving on a little bit more, Araujo, another Barcelona player, 77 pace, probably a little bit underpaced, but we move. And then Militao, another insane La Liga center back, 86 pace, 85 defense, 82 physical, only 84 rated. It's kind of it's kind of crazy that Militao is 84 rated um, and has a you know 86 pace for Tamori, 86 defense, and Militao has got 86 pace, 85 defense. Um, I was thinking of somebody else there. Just kidding. Rudiger is who I'm thinking of. Militao's card, in my opinion, looks better than Rudiger, and Rudiger is 87 rated. So you know how those ratings are always a little bit you know, messed up from time to time. Actually, if I could go find Rudiger over here, I believe. Yeah, so Rudiger's 87 rated. He's got 82 pace, 86 defense, and 85 physical. 
And then Militao has a minus one defense, minus three physical, but more pace lower rating overall, better dribbling and passing than Rudiger. And, you know, I, how much is Militao going to be at the start of the game this year? If I had to throw a price out there just randomly, uh, it's the wrong card. Eder Militao. Let me take a quick look at this dude. Eder Militao, what was his rating last year? 82. So he gets a plus two. Real Madrid winning Champions League. EA getting showing them some love with some upgrades. He was 40, 48,000 coins in that early stage of the year last year. Man, we have a lot of great center backs, though, this year. It's really interesting to see how these prices are going to pan out. But I would say, again, for this card, the Vinny Jr. and the chemistry probably makes this guy a little bit extra this year. I'm going to say like 60 to maybe 75K. I'm going to say 75K. I see somebody here in the comments saying 75K to 125K first week of FIFA 23. I'd go more towards the lower end of that, but I think 75K would be a pretty good you know price point for this Militao card. So, again, it's... We, we're kind of basing a lot of these prices on how we think the market's going to be and comparing it to FIFA 22 because the market at FIFA 22 was completely different than, than earlier years. But after going through this last year, I just don't imagine that EA would change anything else up. All right, scrolling through some more players. Kessie, 84 rated, pretty big upgrade for him, I do believe, from his gold card. Actually, that's a plus one, I believe. This is 83 for his FIFA 22 card. Changed to Barcelona, though. Nice looking defensive mid card. Renato Sanchez, this is a big one. Oh, Media not displayed. Oh, no. PSG. Wow. PSG is really, uh, cl <laughs> wow. Claiming copyright images. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, uh, Renato Sanchez, 80 rated. That's a really insane 80 rated card. I can't get with the fact that image says it's copyrighted. That's crazy. Anyways, great Renato Sanchez card. PSG links. Uh, that's going to be a card a lot of people like to use. At the beginning of the year last year, you might remember that he was extinct. Not even with the PSG links. Um, I mean, his card is actually a little bit worse than last year. Same rating. We go down on the pace. Dribbling and uh, physical stay the same. And actually, everything stays the same except minus one pace. So it's basically the same Renato card, just with better links. I think he's going to be more expensive this year just in the fact that he has better links. So probably around 30 k for this Renato Sanchez card at the start of FIFA 23. Usman Dembele, again, a, a nice looking card. Has competition with Rafinha though, but his French links, that's a big one. Chalmeni, minus two pace, uh, but still a, a pretty good base card right there. 82 rated. Uh, that's a GG. I mean, technically a pretty big upgrade, but minus two pace is a bit unfortunate. And then one of the last ones here is Darwin Nunez. Now, the only problem is with this Nunez card he is three star, three star. And again, there's more to come with a lot of these players. We don't know a lot of their positions. For this one, we do know an alternate position of left wing. That's pretty nice. Um, but 89 pace, 82 shooting Shooting is nice. It kind of gives me like Erling Holland vibes with a little bit less shooting. And then three star, three star is a bit of a problem. So that's a bit unfortunate for Liverpool fans and Darwin Nunez. Of course, Valverde. I mean, if you're, if you're looking at a lot of these cards right here, I'm seeing so many great Barcelona, so many great Real Madrid, and then of course you're going to have so many great Premier League cards as well. It's it's going to be La Liga teams and um, a mix of La Liga, Liga 1, and Premier League at the start of FIFA, I really think. Now there's a ton more ratings that have been released and that are out there, and it's really hard to go through and look them at them all, but I want to look through some of the biggest upgrades. Rafael Leal, 84 rated, plus 7. Uh, the Nunez, uh, we talked about. Jude Bellingham getting a plus 5. Pedri getting a plus 4, but his card doesn't look that good. Luis Diaz with a plus 4. Uh, Rudiger with a plus 4. De Gea, one of the most question marked, like, why is De Gea an 87? He gets a plus 3 rating, and a Mike Magnan gets an 87 rated card as well. Now, I also want to cover some heroes and some icons because we looked and saw some brand new ratings for those as well in the leaks. And the, the one thing I want to say about heroes right away is just remember that these are the base version of these heroes. If you're thinking like, Nate, why is this Yaya Torre only 87 rated when the media that we saw before was an 89 rated Marvel Heroes Torre? These are the World Cup items. Just once again, to share and to show these cards are going to be released in november at the start of the world cup all of these heroes will have a normal regular hero item at the start of fifa 23 so you have some position changes in here right rafa marquez uh his hero world cup item i believe is a center defensive mid card if i could find it on here rafa marquez not on this page it was on the last page and i missed it i guess 
or yeah, there it is. CDM Rafa Marquez with 78 pace, 91 defense, and 89 physical. His base card is a center back with 74 pace, 90 defense, and 88 physical. So some differences there. You can see that some of the heroes are the same, right? Cordoba, Joe Cole. Looks like they're the same dynamic images. Looks like they have the same stats as well. It's just we're adding in the brand new heroes as base cards. You see Yaya Torre right there with 87 rated, club 80 except for the pace. That's a pretty good looking card. These are some of the best ones. You've got JJ Acocha, Forlan, Milito, Lucio, Voler, Coller, Papin, Ginola, Morientes, Abedi Pele, right? Not a lot of changes for the guys that we know, but it's interesting to see some of these foot heroes that are uh, like Park Ji Sung, his base card is a left mid, which is a bit unfortunate, right? Because you think about, okay, if I was going to use Park Ji Sung to help link Hyun Min Sun, in FIFA 23 with a new chemistry specifically, uh, you know, you're a little bit bummed because those are both left mid base position players. Unless they have an alternate position in game, it's going to be a bit harder to do that. Landon Donovan looks pretty good. Uh, I think this smaller red card looks really, really good. We always struggle to get pacey strikers in the Bundesliga. Well, now Holland is gone. Lewandowski is gone. And now it seems like we're going to have a lot of pacey strikers in the Bundesliga. We're going to have Timo Werner, who's back. Adeyemi, if he gets a good enough card. This smaller red card is probably going to be your best Bundesliga striker to start the game. Uh, that's a really, really good looking card. Marquisio looks good. Brolin, I think, looks pretty good for a Serie A attacker as well. A couple more heroes here. Uh, Dirk Kite looks pretty solid. Again, it's going to be a bit difficult to link. Dirk, Peter Crouch looks to be one of the worst. I can't lie. Um, and then Al Owarian, the Saudi... Uh, brand new hero, which on his moments or his uh, World Cup card will have 99 pace, only 94 currently. So this Govu striker card looks pretty good too. I mean, Cap de Villa looks even decent for a left back with hero links. So these are the base hero cards that were leaked. And I wanted to show those because a lot of people just started thinking about these cards, but in actuality, they're, they're all going to have regular hero ratings uh, to start the game as well before we get these in November. So that's kind of interesting to see. Um, I think actually, can I look at Smaller Wreck again? Did they change his league? Smaller Wreck is shown as a base hero card in the Bundesliga, but for his uh, World Cup heroes card, he is not in the Bundesliga. That's actually really interesting. I did not notice that before. I didn't notice if any other leagues were changed, but um, you know, that was something that we saw with like the foot captains um, and the Shapeshifters promo was that they changed some of the nations on the cards or the league, I guess, for the heroes, the league links, right? So that's interesting on Smaller Rec. But that card, I think, is one of my favorites. If he's four star, four star, or better, that'd be an incredible, incredible card. So that's one thing to get excited for. Now, a new icon as well, Jarzinho. We knew that we were getting a Jarzinho. And look at these stats. This is the base version. It's kind of like it's giving me Garincha vibes, but maybe even a little bit better. Jarzinho can be a right wing, right mid, or striker. 91 pace, 90 dribble. This is his base card, by the way. Look at some of these in-game stats. Absolutely incredible looking card. And then this is the mid Jarzinho. 93 pace, 91 dribble, 5 star, 4 star. 89 shooting as well. Looks like a really, really meta type of card. Now, another big icon that was leaked statistically was Gerd Muller. His 92 rated mid card and his 89 rated base version both have 90 plus shooting. A little bit lower on the pace. It, it, it's interesting to see the change here. It's kind of like, you know, Del Piero. How Del Piero's mid icon has less pace, better shooting, but his baby icon is a little bit worse shooting, but more pace. Jordan Miller is almost the same. 89 pace on the base. Jordan Miller with 90 shooting and 85 dribble. And then the middle version has minus five pace, but plus three shooting, plus three passing, plus one dribble and the same physical. So I feel like it's a case here of the baby Jordan Miller will have more hype at the beginning of the game uh, than maybe the mid and some of the higher versions until the prime comes out. So again, there are leaks everywhere. If you actually go, here's a really bad leak. If you uh, see this Jabi Alonso, it, it looks even worse than Pep Guardiola is in FIFA as an icon right now. That's very unfortunate. But if you go over here and search hashtag FIFA 23 and you go down and look at a lot of these tweets, you will see so many people have posted these leaks and so many people have been talking about this stuff. Uh, it's it's very, very interesting. I still can't believe this from Nato Sanchez. Are any of these other ones? Nah, it's just the PSG guys. That's crazy. St. Maximin, 81 rated card right there. 90 pace, 88 dribble. Looks very overpowered. Hopefully five-star skills per usual. Um, Upa Meccano um, and then Indica. Very, very nice combination here 
for a starter team in the Bundesliga. So you can go down through this list and you can see so many leaked cards. There's the Chalmany card that we looked at. You've got official ratings for like Arsenal players, Partey 84, Jesus 83, Saka 82. Again, you can see so many if you go ahead on Twitter and, and go and do some of that. Uh, you'll see a ton of of these different ratings for all sorts of different cards, the top 40 players, top 50. And then also, you know, you have teams that are tweeting out like all the United players, 84 rated Varane, 84 rated Sancho, 82 Ericsson, stuff like that. So there's a lot more to come. And, and I'll say this too, again, we, we take these leaks. I mean, we, we do believe that these leaks are pretty accurate, especially because it's, it's coming for, straight from the game, right? That's, that's really big. Um, they're coming straight from the game of FIFA 23 and that's why we believe them to be pretty true and pretty accurate always take it with a grain of salt though because these these ratings technically could be changed um over a little while's time we'll have to see there is so much more information to come related to FIFA 23 so hang tight subscribe to the channel for a lot more information and we're going to be covering all of the brand new FIFA 23 info and news as it does drop as we get closer and closer to the new game. So if you enjoyed today's video, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or thoughts about some of these ratings. And of course, as I mentioned, subscribe if you are new. It has been Nate the Foot Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.